Internationalization is a big addition to Rails 2.2. So how do we use it? Well, that's what I want to show you in this episode. So let's just focus on this page right here. It's the introduction page to a store application where we have some text that we want to translate into various languages of the user's choosing. So let's say that when someone goes to sign up on our site, they can choose which language they prefer. And here I'm just supporting two different languages, English and Wookie speak, if they happen to be a Wookie. So that language pull down menu is pretty simple in the code. It's just a string column that I added called language to the user model. And then I just call select on here, provide two options, one for English and Wookie speak. And for those, they each have a character code representation, EN for English and WK for Wookie speak. And that's what I'll go by uh, when choosing the language. Now, if you built your application in Rails 2.2, you can find a locals directory in the config directory, and that's where you can add the languages you want to support. Uh, if you have a previous application that you're upgrading, you could just add this manually. And really, this just has a YAML file for each language, and there's just some default content into here for the English version. So here's the index file with the text that you want to translate into to support different languages. So really, let's do all this text here. Um, the first step is just to copy all of the current text into the English YAML file. And then we have to give it some identifiers as we do so. So let's call this welcome. And we can nest our identifier so we can say welcome title is that. The welcome paragraph is this content. Um, we can say products title is this and our released uh, text is this. All right, so that's just basically translating, putting all of our English formatted text into the English YAML file. And now you probably guessed the next step is to make another version of this file for the wiki. So wk.yaml, and then I'll just paste in some content here for the wiki translation. Now you have to forgive me for those natively speaking it. I don't want to, um, a little rough on the translation, so it might not be correct. And then next, going back to our index file, we need to reference our translated version instead of having the raw text into here. And the secret to this is just calling the T method and then just passing your identifier. In this case, it's welcome.paragraph. And that will yeah, use a period here to represent the nesting, so that'll use the welcome paragraph text inside either one of your YAML files, depending on what translation you choose. And then so we basically do the same thing for each one of these. But let me snap my finger and speed this up. And there we go. That's what it might look like where we use the T method wherever we are referencing um, some text. So now if we go to our site and reload here, you can see it hasn't changed much, but that's what we want because now it's using the English translated version and referencing our English YAML file to get all the text here. So we can change the language on the fly in our application controller by just adding a before filter here. Uh, let's say set user language, make a private method here called the same thing, and then just call I18N, which by the way stands for internationalization, a short version of it. Set the local to whatever language we want. So let's say WK. So now if we go back to our page, hit reload, uh, we can see it changes, but not really what we want. It says translation missing. It doesn't know about our wiki speak. And the reason is that these files are loaded when your application starts up, and I just need to restart the web server. All right, let's do that. Stop our current one, restart it. And now when we hit reload, there we go. Now it's wiki speak. Now we don't want to set this statically, we want to change it depending on what the current user setting is. So what we can do is just call current user dot language, and that'll be whatever language they chose when they registered. Unless, or actually if, the user is currently logged in. We only want to set it then. Now since I'm not logged in, it defaults to English here, but if I log in, then there we go. Now we're Wookie speak because that's the current user setting. Now you may notice a couple things here. One is that our login message, flash message, has not um, been translated, obviously, and our dollar sign 
is no longer visible with our dividers. And that's because this is language dependent and you have to set that specifically. So let's address our flash message first. Of course, we have to add it to our YAML files here. So the English version, we could say the login flash message should be what we currently use. And we'll just give ourselves a Wookiee one. And then inside of our sessions controller where we set that flash message, uh, we could just set that to whatever we used before. And again, here we have access to that T um, method, which is just going to be uh, flash.login, and that will translate it for us. Now this T method is actually short for i18n.translate. So if you ever need to translate something outside of the controller in view, just use that. Now if we choose login again, there we go. Now it says our flash message in Wookiee style. But we also still have to change our price and dividers here. So inside your language YAML file, there's a lot of presets you can set here uh, for defining how dates are represented, numbers, and so on. And to get a good example of those, check out the URL mentioned in the comments, which are generated by when you create a Rails application. And if we go to that page, it gives us a lot of examples of existing languages, which we can basically copy from and see we have time formats, date formats, and so on, including number formats like here, where we can set our precision separators and currency and so on. And so if we go to our wiki YAML file, we can paste this in and make up our own kind of number separators and so on. And there we go. And then reload our page, and there we go. Now it's a uh, wiki style uh, number separators. And well, that wraps up this episode on internationalization. There's a lot more to go into, but hopefully this will give you an idea of how to get started. Um, for example, you could change the way dates are formatted. Uh, you could handle validation error messages differently and so on. But I encourage you to just check out the documentation for how to do those kind of things, and I'll put links in the show notes on those as well. This episode is sponsored by Pragmatic Screencasts. There you will find high-quality screencasts on a variety of subjects, including Ruby and Rails. Check them out at pragmatic.tv.